Hello, everyone. Um, today is my honor to present my topics of using subsurface chemistry to enhance catalytic performance of CO2 electro reduction. I'm Fang Lin, um, currently a system professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering Department at UMass Law. So before I talk to the topics, I want to show a pretty picture of law at Massachusetts. We are at New England area with very pretty colorful fall. And hopefully you enjoy your own fall um, in your city. And um, if you have time next year, feel free to visit. Um, the Francis Engineering of College is located here. And um, we are one of the universities still operating the nuclear uh, reactor, which is a vice cylinder here. So we are all located here and we are nearby the Marilet uh, uh, River. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, if you have a chance, visit us. And I'm currently recruiting the PhD candidate as well as the postdoc. So if you are interested by the end of my talk regarding my research, feel free to contact me. Currently, my group is uh, at Chemical Engineering Department at UMass Law. Uh, we have two PhD students, Mingyu, who is in charge of the CO2 electro reduction project. Daniel is in charge of the microwave catalysis project. We have two undergrad students, James and Emily, who is in charge of the machine learning and um, light alkene activation project. We acknowledge our computational resources from Cascade, from uh, CERT at Argonne National Lab, as well as MGHPCC at Boston. Back to the topic of CO2 electro reduction, we will start with the background and we will talk about the results and conclusion regarding this uh, project. So the current global challenge of CO2 uh, of um, the word is that the world needs more energy, which is depending on the fossil fuels. And that at the same time, it will release the harmful gas such as carbon dioxide, such as methane, and the climate is changing. To solve this challenge, um, and the good news regarding uh, the current technology regarding renewable energy is that the solar driving or wind driving or water driving renewable electricity, the, uh, the price is near the economy uh, availability. And, um, but the steel to storage such as renewable energy driving the electricity is very expensive. Another good news is that the CO2 capture technology is nearly industrialized. So you can see from this picture is Shell uh, at Canada. They start to capture the uh, carbon dioxide and they can capture 1 million tons of carbon dioxide annually. But the challenge is how to utilize those captured carbon dioxide. So with those challenge, we go to our topic, the electric reduction of carbon dioxide, which is one of the solutions can utilize the renewable energy driving the electricity, uh, as well as utilize those captured carbon dioxide. And it can convert to the valuable chemical feedstocks or the fuels. Uh, um, if we can convert our carbon dioxide electrochemically to isolin, if the selectivity can be 70%, then we can have the profit, which is $20 billion in the USA and Canada. So it's a pretty promising uh, technology to be utilized and uh, industrialized. However, it met the challenge. The one of the challenge is the selectivity to isolate or isolate is couldn't be 70%. The selectivity is per to a single product. Uh, currently, the catalyst is copper-based catalyst because copper is the low-cost transition metal, which can convert carbon dioxide to multi-carbon hydrocarbons. But it can also convert to the other products such as formic acid, such as carbon monoxide or methanomethane, those C1 chemistry. It can also convert to the C2 chemicals such as acetyl acetate. It can also convert small portion to propylene propyl acetone, but to a single product such as acetone or acetylene, the selectivity is per. 
to enhance the selectivity, the researchers develop different curvature morphology of the catalyst so that if you can enhance the curvature, you enhance the local electric field of the CO2 electric reduction, then you enhance the selectivity. Um, you can also change the oxidation state of your catalyst, change the morphology, which can also enhance the CO2 electric reduction to a single product. You can also modify your catalyst to be an active interface between the uh, metal cluster and the metal oxide. By tuning the coordination number of your surface, you can also tune in the selectivity of the CO2 electric reduction. Or you can generate a bifunction catalyst using bimetallic system. Defects can enhance significantly regarding the selectivity of the CO2 electric reduction valve. The defects can be from the green boundary of your catalyst. You can also generate a cold shell system, which utilizes the string effect of your catalyst, which can also enhance the selectivity of the CO2 electric reduction. Well, sometimes you can also use MOX material, such as that porous material, which can uh, uh, enhance the transport properties of the CO2 electric reduction, which can also enhance your CO2 electric reduction selectivity. Um, there is another challenge, not only the selectivity is the uh, challenge to impress the CO2 electric reduction to be industrialized. Another challenge is the per stability of your catalyst in an electrochemical reduction environment. And you can see that even though we have high efficiency, energy efficiency of the catalyst, the stability also impress this technology to be uh, widely used in the market. And the researchers have been changing the precursor of eucarylist, changing the synthesis method, as well as changing the reactor design. The goal of our research is design a copper-based eucarylist with a high selectivity and high stability of CO2 electric reduction to C2 chemicals. In order to achieve this goal, first we need to understand what is the state of the art for CO2 electric reduction to C2 chemicals. So we need to understand the mechanism in this uh, complex system. And we, we are knowing that the CO-CO demerization is the really limiting step uh, for the CO2 electric reduction to C2 chemicals such as acetylene, acetone. And in order to enhance the stability uh, selectivity of the catalyst, we need to lower the thermodynamic property as well as the kinetic properties of the CO-CO demerization. Another current of art is one of the publication from Bill Golders group that they found that if you have an island or interface between the copper plus and the copper metallic, such, a, such interface will lead the lower activation barrier as well as the reaction energy of the COCO demerization. And this is based on the experimental observation that when you have a mix of the copper oxide and the copper, then your CC, uh, your C2 selectivity is significantly enhanced. And based on this observation, based on this theory background, our hypothesis is that we want to introduce a stable subsurface modifier element, which will generate the mix of the copper metallic and the copper plus region. And such region will enhance the selectivity and activity of the CO2 electric reduction to C2 chemicals. The same time, such subsurface element is stable inside your copper catalyst the, um, as compared to, for example, here is the copper oxide uh, copper. Then with that, we go to our results section. We first ex exam uh, different electron active elements such as boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. We want to see which elements like to stay at the subsurface as compared to the surface because subsurface is hard to be reduced under the electron reduction environment. And we found that relatively boron and carbon are more stable as compared to nitrogen or oxygen to stay at the subsurface. So we, we hypothesize that the boron and the carbon like to stay in the subsurface to modify the copper catalyst and will be more stable as compared to the nitrogen or oxygen modified copper catalyst. 
Then the next question comes to, can we use this boron carbon catalyst to, uh, to change the copper catalyst to have such region, which is got copper plus and copper metallic? Then we go to the charge analysis of such boron or carbon doped copper catalyst. We found that when the dopant boron or carbon stay at the subsurface, the nearby copper will have a copper positive charge. And the, um, the nearby copper um, uh, region um, is a copper metallic, so copper zero. So the one next to the dopant will be copper plus. And this gives us the confidence that such subsurface modifier can generate the region between the copper zero and the copper plus. Then the next thing we care about is, okay, the CC coupling is the rate limiting step for the CO2 electron reduction to C2 chemicals. Then the CO is the key intermediate. What is the CO absorption energy for the copper plus as compared to the copper metallic for this catalyst? Well, we found that the absorption energy when the CO bound to this copper positive charge, the copper, it is significantly stronger as compared to the metallic copper. Then we further analysis, okay, the boron can do this thing well carbon do, well the other uh, subsurface modifier can do. So we scan the carbon, nitrogen, boron, oxygen, and the fluoride for the subsurface modification. And we found that indeed that all of them can generate a stronger absorption energy of the CO as compared to just a pure copper catalyst. And we found that the reason is that such um, subsurface element can change the electronic state of the copper. It can shift the D band center and change the CO absorption energy. There is another way to um, explain such modification on the CO bonding energy is the local electric field. After you modify the copper catalyst with subsurface element, you basically generate an active charge of the near surface area of the copper. And because of the periodicity, the top part of the copper will be positive charge. You induce such local electric field, which is from positive to negative. And when the field is aligned with your dipole moment of the CO, that will stabilize the CO absorbed on the surface. So the local electric field generated from this uh, subsurface modifier, such as boron or carbon, can enhance the local electric field, which can further enhance the CO absorption energy near the surface. Then the further analysis, okay, how about we, we tune these concentration of the boron. Uh, if we tune the concentration of the boron, we tune the oxidation state of the copper, we tune the local electric field of the copper, can we tune the CO absorption energy? And we found that the CO absorption energy is indeed monotonically increasing as we tune the oxidation state of the copper from zero metallic copper to positive charge. So we know that this subsurface chemistry can turn the key intermediate CO absorption energy using the local electric field. Well, the CC coupling is the rate limiting step. As we turn the CO absorption energy, we can at the same time turn the CC coupling reaction energy as well as the kinetic barrier. So we further scan using a boron dubbed copper as a study case. Um, well, we found that when you have the CO-CO dimerization, the descriptor is that two CO absorption on the surface. Then we use the average CO absorption energy of that two CO um, molecules as a descriptor. We scan the CO-CO dimerization. What we found is there is an optimum range for the CO-CO dimerization, which stays around 0.8 to 1.0 electron volt. With this optimum range of the absorption energy of the CO, the CO-CO dimerization is significantly enhanced. Well, we also found at this optimum range, there are several points located. It's not all the points will stay on the peak of the volcano plot. Why? Then we zoom in to another descriptor. So the previous descriptor is the average CO absorption energy. 
Then the second descriptor we want to see is at this optimum range, we see the difference of this two CO absorption energy. Well, we found that when this two CO absorption energy is significantly large at this optimum range of the average CO absorption energy, we found that the CC coupling is even enhanced. So the in order to improve the selectivity of the CO2 electric reduction to C2 chemicals, what you need to have is you need to have the average of this two CO absorption energy at the optimal range between the 0.8 electrovolt to 1.0 electrovolt. The same time you need to keep these two CO molecules have significant large absorption energy difference. We also use such theory to see our another dopant carbon, which is also can be stable at the subsurface. We found that similar conclusion that when you have the average absorption energy of that two CO molecule is around 0.8 electrovolts. And when the uh, two CO absorption energy at this optimum range with large difference, then it has relatively best the CO-CO dimerization reaction energy. We further did the kinetic barrier of the CO-CO dimerization uh, over the carbon dopped copper. We found that the kinetically the activation barrier is significantly lower for the CO-CO dimerization as well. Then we use the experimental validation to validate our theory using a boron dopped copper as a study case. We use a VAT synthesis method to synthesize the boron dopped copper. And we use uh, XPS and ICP to validate that our boron is near the surface. We found that a boron uh, bonding and collab bonding energy um, from the XPS near the surface. We also use the SCP to validate that there are a small amount of the boron near the surface as well. Uh, then we use zinc and exhaust trying to see as we changing the boron concentrations, we can change the oxidation state of the carb, uh, copper from metallic to positive charge. Then we perform the CO2 electric reduction over boron of the copper. We found that performance that the C2 selectivity is significantly larger as compared to the C1 selectivity. So the Faraday efficiency of the C2 product is near 80% uh, of CO2 electric reduction to C2. And the stability you can see from this stability test that our 40 hours test for the boron of the copper is very stable. So in the end, the conclusion of this project is we can use subsurface dopants such as carbon and boron to stabilize the copper-based catalyst, and which also have these features that there is a copper metallic and a copper plus. And with this catalyst, we can reach a high selectivity and stability of the CO2 electric reduction to C2 chemicals. And such region is generated the uh, local electric field using this subsurface chemistry. And we found that quantitatively uh, optimum range of these two CO molecule has to be around 0.8 to 1.0 electrovolt for the CC coupling. And at this optimum range, if you have two CO molecules have large absorption energy difference that can further enhance the CO-CO dimerization. Um, to the end, uh, for my group, uh, we are doing pure computational work. We do a uh, different scale of the modeling, including DFT for atomic level, including micro modeling for the macro scale simulation, as well as the reactor scale simulation of computational fluid dynamics. We focus on electrocatalysis. We focus on thermal catalysis, as well as microwave catalysis for heterogeneous catalysis to understand the mechanism, to understand how um, the surface uh, can drive and different catalysis phenomena. And uh, we are recruiting um, PhD students as well as postdocs. So if you are interested in the work we are doing, feel free to reach me. Uh, thank you.